Wise words from Canada's first woman in space, Sault Ste. Marie native Roberta Bondar. She's inspired Olympic veteran Alan Nolay to return for the third time to the Games. Perhaps given wings to Chris Burley, who will take flight in Atlanta at his first Olympics. Bondar's powerful achievements is mirrored in the performance of emerging gymnastics star Richard Aikida. Three men already on course to the Olympic frontier for Canada. For the Canadian women, the flight plan is not yet complete. The crew must be limited to three, but six have international experience. All are worthy of the Olympic assignment. And just as Bondar's flight tested the limits of her ability, the Nationals will see who's cut from Olympic cloth. It is incredible that we have the spirit and drive within us to try to achieve good things to make us better. And if we let go of those dreams, if we let go of those ideals and things that we have ahead of us in life, then we'll never get to accomplish anything. The course is set for Canadian gymnastics. And the destination is Atlanta. From the site of the National Championships in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, here are Scott Russell and Carol Orchard. Thanks very much, Bob Boving, and welcome to Memorial Gardens in the Sioux. Carol, what a critical time for Canadian gymnastics. You've been an Olympic coach. You know all about the pressure involved. We know that three Canadian women are going to the Olympics in Atlanta, but we don't know the identity of those women yet. They'll have to compete for the three spots, and today it should be a real battle. Scott, there is nothing like the pressure of an Olympic trials. This does not compare to anything that these girls have experienced to date. The co-defending national champions, Exaltation and Dictava, are looking very strong. Kuzno and Tusek have also had some excellent international results this year. And don't forget about Shannon McEachran. We just came back from the World Championships in Puerto Rico, and she made a semi-final position on vault. An outstanding accomplishment. The competition is going to be fierce. Everyone is feeling the pressure. Three Canadian men are also going to Atlanta. We know who they are. Chris Burley, Alan Nole, and Richard Aikida. Still something very real is at stake here, and it's a totally different kind of pressure completely different. They are trying to determine who will be the Canadian Olympic coach. Very different pressure. Usually the guys compete for themselves, their club, their country. This time they're competing for their own personal coaches. A lot of emotion is invested in this. They want it to be their coach. All right, Carol, Canadian Gymnastics sets a course for Atlanta. Here's our captain's log for today's show. We'll profile the men's contingent. They'll also stage a battle for the national title. Carol has another edition of Chalk Talk. But up first, the critical Olympic trials for the women. And the first of the optional exercises is the vault for Jennifer Exaltation of Windsor, Ontario. And we start with the optionals, not the compulsories. Scott, for an Olympic trials, this is a great event for the women to start on. They don't have to worry about their nerves getting in the way of an intricate beam routine or bar routine. Great vault for Jennifer. She has a lot of energy. Take a look at this. Nice execution in the air. Deep pike. She's just over-rotating it a bit, and I think that comes down to Olympic trial nerves. First of two vaults, they'll average the scores 9-3-2-5 for Jennifer Exaltation. She competes for the Winstonettes. She's really going for it. All she has to do is just calm down a little bit, try to bump it up. Better landing. That'll just be a one-tenth deduction, but she has good amplitude in the air. 9-3-3-7. She talks it over with her coach, Leonid Gorkovsky. Puts her in good position after the vault. Here's Shannon McEachern. As we mentioned, she made a semi-final at the World Championships in Puerto Rico on the vault. This is really her event. It really is. She has a spectacular front front pike with a half turn. Very dynamic. Oh, Scott, she has done the wrong vault. That is not what she told the judges she was going to be doing. You can see it here. There's no pike. There's no half turn. The judges will judge what they see, but then there will be a three-tenth deduction on top of that. On the first ball. Oh, what a way to start Olympic trial. She has really got to pull her nerves together here. And there it is. That's what she's capable of. A beautiful front front pike with a half turn. Nailed the landing. 9-2-3-7 as she really pulls it up with the second ball. Now Mary Lou Cousineau of Rapontigny, Quebec. 
He paints for the Gym Knicks Club, coached by Bernard Petio, Francine Bouffard, and Jose Sear. And she's a veteran of five world championships. This is a great event for her. She's just come back from the Grand Prix de France, silver medal with this vault. Scott, you can see the girls have a bundle of energy on this event. They're really going for it during this Olympic trial. Now watch the bump. Great amplitude off the horse. Perfect layout, but just too much energy again on that landing. 9.45, she still scores very well on that first vault. Remember, they average the two vaults. This is a difficult vault to do well. It's a blind landing. It has a start value of 9.9. And there it is. Much better control on that blind landing. 9.5, that's her coach, Bernard Petio. What a great start for Mary Lou Cousineau of Quebec. Marlene Lavoie, originally from Quebec, just outside Montreal, but now competes for Alberta. She's coached by Valerie and Michelle Arsenal, and you know, Scott, she's the only athlete in this Olympic trials representing Alberta. A good ball. Yachenko half off, front layout. Now watch, she absorbs into the horse a little bit. That cuts her bump, but a very nicely controlled landing. Alternate for Canada at the Sabai World Championships, 9-3-2-5 on the first ball. A very strong athlete. Nice and powerful. There's the round off, half turn, front layout. There's her average, 9-3-3-7, keeps her right in the competition. The top three are going to be our Olympic gymnasts in Atlanta. Lena Dekteva, the co defending Canadian champion along with Jennifer Exultation. This may be her last chance. She's 19 years old. Actually, it will be her last chance. Lena is going on to UCLA after this on scholarship, but she's putting in a great performance at this championship. Same vault the other girls have done. There's Yurchenko, half-turn front layout. Now, she has her shoulders a little bit in front of the horse, doesn't get that good bump. Needs a little more airtime. 9-4-2-5 with one vault to go. There's the round off. Again, a little flat off the horse, but the layout position is excellent. Quite consistent in her technique from the first vault to the second vault. Consistent in scores as well. The average is 9-4-2-5. And there's her coach, Alex Bard of Gymnastics Mississauga. So after one rotation of the optionals, Quebec's Marilou Cousineau leads with two solid vaults. There's how the top five look in the early going with plenty more to come. And when we return, the women will head to the... Thank you very much, Eric. And we salute Philip's commitment to amateur athletics in Canada. Rotation number two, Mary Lou Cousineau of Quebec. She's the leader after one in the optionals. And you know, Scott, it is so impressive. Mary Lou is only 17, and she has represented Canada at five world championships. Very nice release. Her routine is jam-packed, lots of advanced elements. Oh, in trouble there, but what a great cover. She was supposed to do a giant full, which is a D. She had to add an extra half turn, which is an E. And look at her going right for every element. Beautiful Pike Yeager. Getting a lot of support from her Quebec teammates. Huge double layout. Five world championship appearances would like nothing better than to go to the Olympic Games in a solid routine on the uneven bar. What a smart cover. There's her giant full. A little softness in the back. She has to add a half turn, but that's all right. That's an E move. A slight deduction for those bent knees, but what a lesson for young gymnasts. Always keep going. Go for the cover. Finish the routine. Early in the competition, but Mary Lou Cousineau is scoring well. 9-4-7-5 on the uneven bars. Here's a rising star in Canadian gymnastics. Yvonne Tusek, only 16 years of age and fifth overall at the recent McDonald's American Cup. This is a world-class routine, no doubt about it, but it's difficult for Yvonne to hit it consistently. It is technically demanding. Starts right away. Giant half, great Pike Yeager. Now, this is the big trick here. Dominique Dawes does it. Hindor, oh, too far away. The soft mat cushions are landing, so it doesn't hurt at all. Now she's continuing well. She's not going to leave anything out. Every tenth will count in this Olympic trial. She's got the pack salto done. Oh, that's going to be weighing heavy on her mind. She's going to need a strong dismount, protect every tenth. Very nice double layout. Well, 
a miss on the release for Yvonne Tusek will cost her a very intricate routine, as you said. Here's the Pike Jaeger. Good amplitude, well above the bar. Now this is where the routine becomes very technically demanding. The Hindorf release, you can see she's just a little too far away from the bar. Great extension. And she practices ghost balls in the gym, so she knows how to protect herself properly. But she would have loved to catch that bar. Being consoled by her coach, Alvira Rosati, 9-1 for Yvonne Tusek with the miss on the uneven bars. Now, Lena Dekteva, who's got some ground to make up. She is the co-defending national champion with Jennifer Exultation. A very strong event for Lena. She swings bars nicely, good execution. Nice giant full, giant half. Oh, look at the height on that gorgeous Pike Jaeger. Most of these gymnasts are going to be showing two release moves, and that's exactly what the judges want to see. And there's another one, Sikachev, well above the bar. Now she has a pretty nifty dismount coming up here. Double spectacular landing. Congratulations from her coach, uh, Alex Bard, and Lena Dekteva on the bars has done extremely well. Now watch the height she generates on this double front. Lots of air time, huge amplitude, half out, spots the landing, nails it down. Right behind Mary Lou Cousineau after one, nine, six, seven, five is the result. That's her mother, Svetlana Dekteva, also one of her coaches. Her Olympic dream flashed before her eyes. She needs a solid routine here to make up for that unfortunate error, uncharacteristic error for Shannon on vault. Nice uprise. Good giant full, giant full. She's getting big bonus points here, right to a very, very impressive ginger. You can see her working the bars really well. Shannon is known for excellent dynamics, a very determined athlete, and you're gonna see her wind up this dismount right here. Double layout, she's got it. Well, an outstanding routine on the uneven bars. Both she and Alex Bard know that will move her way up in the standing. Still very early in the competition. This is exactly the combination work judges want to see. Twisting elements, there's the giant full. Combined directly with another twisting element, giant full. Big bonus points there, but look at this. Huge ginger, well above the bar. Those three D elements, lots of bonus. Well, what a critical time to score this well. 9-7-2-5 for Shannon McEachern on the uneven bars. And Solena Dekteva and McEachern, with great work on the bars, get to the head of the pack to join Mary Lou Cousineau after two. Yvonne Tusek, high hopes, with some work to do. Now to rotation number three. And to the beam, this is your specialty, Carol. And what a time for Mary Lou Cousineau. Got to hit the mount here. This is the dreaded event of all events, but Mary Lou is very strong on beam. Oh, she was a fraction of an inch off on that and only got her back foot on. That is really unfortunate. She has worked so hard on this event with her coach, Francine Bupar. She's got it all. Very original routine, including an element that is world original and has been named in her honor. You can see her really starting to focus in. She knows she cannot make another mistake. And look at that determination. She is absolutely fighting every tenth. Okay, she's back on track now. That's the exact same move that she fell off of. She uses it as a mount and in the routine. And she's back on. This is one event that shows no mercy. And with Olympic trial jitters, every tenth is so valuable. Now here's her move, switch split into a Cousineau. She's the only one in the world that does that skill. She looks very composed now. Back on track, the dismount will be important. Round off, double back, still fighting for every tenth. Well, as you said, Carol, she fought every step of the way. Oh, great coaching angle. Straight in the run, only a fraction of a centimeter twisted on takeoff, but that's enough to knock you off this event. 
well in amazement she looks at an 885 and that was team she had to rush over to beam her warm-up was very rushed indeed and she had uh, an unfortunate fall so she really needs to pull it together here that's a beautiful plunge in fact there was a gorgeous full page color photo of her with a story in the may issue of the international gymnast magazine so she's receiving all sorts of international acknowledgement for her expertise currently seventh after two rotations here in the olympic trials but as we said there are still the compulsory exercises to come after the option long way to go for most athletes, those compulsory exercises are far more difficult to perform well than these. Now watch this. Front handspring, front tuck. The only female gymnast in the world to perform that combination. She really wowed everyone at World Championships when she performed that one. Yvonne is showing a lot of confidence on this event. She has become a very skilled beam worker. And once you've mastered this event, you're going places. Well, incredible flexibility. Now, you hear the bell. She doesn't need to rush. She still has 10 full seconds before she has to dismount. Round up, double back. Oh, she punches that up nicely. Well, Yvonne Tusek has responded to the challenge here, trying to make up some ground. And here's her world original combination, front handspring, front salto. The entire thing is blind. She's worked long and hard to master that one. 9.55, five, five. she will make up the ground, and things are really tightening up in the race for the three Olympic spots. After three rotations of optional trials, here's how it stands. The co-national champion, Lena Dekteva, has the lead. We're back in a mobile competition of these Olympic trials. This is Yvonne Tusek on the floor. Scott, waiting this long is very difficult on the athletes. You just want to go. This is her big open line. Huge Arabian double front. Excellent control, and she runs right back again. Nice triple twist and keeps her right inside the boundary line. Scored very well at the World Championships in Japan with this routine and it's a very original routine it really is the choreographer is antonia markov she's a bulgarian rhythmic coach lots of originality and it suits yvonne to a t great front tumbling line Ontario now trains in Cambridge with Alvira Sadi and a great floor exercise. This line is truly spectacular. Equivalent to Lilia Paskopaeva, Arabian double front, lots of air time. She knows exactly where she is near. There is Alvira Sadi along with Yvonne Tusek and a great 9-7 on the floor. Best floor worker of the group. She is the co-national champion along with Lena Dekteva. Jennifer has come such a long way on this event. Big tumbling, layout, double pike, great opening line. And her dance is just breathtaking. Now watch this. A two and a half fly spring, a very intricate line. Very few athletes can do that line.
Jennifer. Beautiful. Well, she was third after three rotations, but I hazard to say that she is making up ground with a great floor routine. Exceptional. This is one of her major tumbling lines. The reason it's so difficult is she has no time to check her landing. She has to be taking off for the next skill before she even has time to land the two and a half. Debbie Vidmar, our coach, look at this. First place on the floor exercise, 9725 for Jennifer Exaltation. And after the optional portion of the Olympic trials, the co-defending national champions lead the pack. The battle for Atlanta will continue at the Sioux as the women set sail for the compulsory showdown. We'll have that as the three ball. The compulsory vault is a Pike Sukahara. Easy to throw, but difficult to meet the judging expectations as a compulsory vault. Pike kicks it open. Mary Lou shows them exactly how it should be done. Quickly, Pike kicks it open to a gorgeous stretch layout. Only one vault here. 9475, the result. Bernard Petio congratulates Mary Lou Cousino. Here's Yvonne two seconds. Scott, although the vault is a Pike, to show maximum amplitude, the judges are looking for them to kick it open and show a laid out position. There's the pike, a little flat off the horse, doesn't have the same amplitude Mary Lou does. The score is going to reflect that. And the score is a 9-1-2-5. The cone actually has a great chance to go. The judges are looking for three things, the pike, the layout, and the landing. There's the pike, the layout, look at that solid landing. 9387 for 19 year old Lena Dictava of Gymnastics Mississauga. After the first compulsory rotation, it's Dictava, Exultation, and McEachern in a tight race. Three positions of the games Yvonne Tusek, Mary Lou Cousineau still challenging. Now rotation number two, uneven bars, the compulsory routine. And I might point out that the compulsory bar routine is not done to music. That's the junior athletes competing their optional routines in the background. This is a phenomenally intricate routine. The compulsory bar routine, the judges are looking for virtually every element to finish in the handstand position, and Yvonne is doing just that. Nice alignment. Toe on front with a half. Great landing. Yvonne Tusek. 9-5-2-5 on the uneven bars and continues to climb the ladder. First three will go to the Olympic Games. Lena Dekteva now. In the compulsory routines, the gymnasts must do exactly what the text prescribes. They can't change any part of the routine, and if they do, there's a deduction. There's Lena fighting for those valuable handstands, showing good position, back straddle. Look at that. She saves it beautifully. Another nice handstand. That's an intricate move in the compulsory routine. Hex to the high bar. Just a dismount left to go. Toe on. Oh, she has missed her feet. And in doing so, not only has she fallen, but she has changed an element. The dismount must have a half turn. She'll lose 0.5 for the fall and another 0.5 for changing an element. 8537. Things can change very quickly in the compulsory exercises. Shannon McEachern now. She's in an interesting predicament right now. She trains every day with Lena, and I'm sure she has never seen Lena miss that dismount. And now she must perform the very same one. Slightly missed the handstand on the back straddle, but that's a beauty. Good heck to the high bar. Now here is that dismount toe on. She's got it with the half turn. That's how it should be done. Eight, nine, seven, five. Yvonne Tusek continues to lead the way on the uneven bars in this compulsory section of the Olympic trials. Now here's Jennifer Exultation. A lot of pressure on these girls, Scott. You just have to admire them all for going through this process. This is the meat of their lives. They all want to go to Atlanta. Nice handstand. Oh, she is in trouble. Now remember, we said they cannot change the routine. Supposed to be a handstand with a half turn. She was in trouble, had to do a full turn. That'll be a 0.5 deduction. Beautiful alignment there. Good amplitude on the hex to the high bar. Oh, she's trying to save every tenth. Great dismount. Good height, spectacular landing. She knows it's trouble, and there's the proof. 8 3 5, a very difficult competition. Only three spots open at the Olympic Games. All of the women competing have, at one time or another, 
represented Canada at the World Championships. This is going to be tough. Dramatic changes to the standings after the second compulsory event. Ivan Tusek has gone into the lead. Dekteva and Exultation, the national champions, have struggled. Stay with us. It's close. Then Lena Dekteva on the beam. Under the best conditions, beam is a tough event. But when this compulsory beam routine came out from the International Gymnastics Federation four years ago, as coaches, we were all very frustrated by the composition. It just doesn't make sense physically. It's very difficult for these girls to do well. It doesn't suit anyone. And honestly, they all struggle with it. What Lena will be trying to do here is hold on to every single tenth and try to make the routine as smooth and as flowing as possible. But I have to say, it's difficult to do to this routine. The judges are looking for a, com a complete split in that handstand. Little things like this, a half turn to sit down is very awkward to do, right into a Valdez. Now what she should be doing is connecting it right to the back handspring and then right to a back walkover. So you can see that she's definitely struggling there. And Lena is a great optional beam worker. That just goes to show you how intricate and complicated this routine really is. Even the dismount is very strange for these athletes. It's a front handspring into a front with a half. Well, you're right, Carol. It doesn't look like a fluid routine. 8775 is the score, but it looks like she's having to walk through a set of required elements. Very awkward. Shannon McEachern now has her chance. You see, in an optional routine, you can actually select the things that you're good at. Only show what you do well, right down to the dance. The dance should suit you. This dance doesn't really suit any of the girls, so it is a constant battle. This is the first compulsory element. The cartwheel done sideways. That's the fuete. The judges are looking for a little more flexibility, a little more airtime. But quite frankly, if you can just get through this routine without too many wobbles, and certainly without a fall, you're ahead of the game. The judges are looking for a split. She shows one, and they're looking for a second split. She's just missing that slightly. Every tenth becoming so important now with five gymnasts in the competition for three Olympic spots. Now here's the tumbling line, which you will never see in an optional routine. Valdez to a gainer back handspring. She's struggling to put that together right to the back walkover. Although you're not seeing any big skills that you would normally see in an optional routine, the intricacy the awkward rhythm makes this routine very difficult to do well. Now here's her dismount. It's lined front handspring, front with a half. Holds on to the landing nicely. Well, Lena Dekeva scored 8.775. Shannon McEachern marginally better at 8.875. Now Jennifer Exultation, who has a very strong reputation on the beam. And I'd have to say Jennifer Exultation and actually Marlene Lavoie are probably the two Canadians that have mastered this beam routine. And they do it very well. Little moves like this, a shoulder roll, very complicated to master. Showing good releve position. That's what the judges want to see. Way up on the toes. Solid cartwheel. Oh, good extension on the fuete. Not much room for error for Jennifer Exultation. She's currently fourth with only one event to come. And you know, Scott, this is the one event. It's easy to error. Gorgeous flexibility. Now, she's the first gymnast to show two splits in that handstand. Every move has to be identical for every competitor, right down to the dance elements. That was a beautiful spin. Let's see if she joins it together. Right to the gainer back handspring and right to the back walkover. Her routine has a little better flow. Oh, now she is losing focus. I think she's relieved that she's through all the difficult elements. Nice flexibility. 
showing full amplitude in every movement. Front hand throwing front with a hop. Beautifully done. Obviously relieved. The best routine we've seen, 9-3-2-5. After three compulsory rotations, it's two-sec exultation in McEachern. The battle will be for that third position. Lena Dekteva point one five back of Shannon McEachern. And it will come down to the floor exercise. The first one we'll see, Yvonne Tusek, and this is her event. Now that's the trick, to make this compulsory floor routine look like it's your routine, as opposed to anyone else's. It, too, is an intricate event, but not nearly as demanding as the B routine, so all of the girls are going to be a little relieved here. Great. Now it's just a layoutful twist. Certainly you would never see that in an optional floor routine, but the judges are looking for incredible punch, great air time. In every jump, just like that, they want to see amplitude. Height off the floor and great flexibility. That was really nicely done by Yvonne. Now you notice the music is very classical. A lot of the athletes don't work to classical music. So that becomes a battle to try to fit to this music. Yvonne's very fortunate. She has had a lot of classical training in her previous gym club. Even the last tumbling line is very strange, Scott, in this compulsory routine. It's demanding because you have to get it really high into the air and then quickly finish on time with the music down low on the floor. And here it is. Nice high back pass. She's got to get down there to finish with the music. The expression on her face says it all. She's done her job. Yvonne Tusek will be going to Atlanta to represent Canada. Her coach, Adura Sadi, very proud. 9487, the result on the floor. And now the battle continues. Shannon McEachern up next on the floor. Remember, we talked about the compulsory routines. Every element must be exactly the same for every athlete, right down to the dance moves. And this music is the same also. In Atlanta, we are going to hear this floor music 96 times. Good opening tumbling line for Shannon. On floor, this classical style may not be easy for Shannon, but she certainly has a tumbling advantage here. So it will all balance out in the end. Slightly ahead of Lena Dekteva for the third position. The section where they're looking for a good split flexibility. Now, this element is something Shannon would never select, an aerial walkover. I'm sure she would never voluntarily put that in an optional routine. It's a specialist trick for girls with good back flexibility, good leg flexibility. And Shannon has worked hard to master that one. enough and so does Alex Bard enough to catch an Olympic spot Shannon McEachern of gymnastics Mississauga in tears now nine four five just slightly behind Yvonne Tusek Jennifer exultation now with a chance to catch an Olympic berth and that's what every athlete in this sport dreams of Scott, Jennifer has been dreaming about this for a long time. She said for her, it would be a dream come true. Good, solid tumbling line. And see how she shows off that flexibility? That's what the judges want to see. And that's where Jennifer will get ahead on this event. She has a very good balance between dance and tumbling. Actually, she does this routine so well, it could be her optional routine. It does suit her nicely. Leg has to be 
nice and high on that turn. She does it well. Ariel walk over right into the roundup split, showing incredible amplitude. Now that section is difficult. It has to look light and playful. And these gymnasts are straining to show every possible position. scores well 9487 she's going to the games and so with all the results in the Olympic trials yield this result Yvonne Tusek exultation and McEachern one two three on their way to Atlanta to represent Canada here is Yvonne